Welcome to another episode of Purchase to Profits. I'm Seth Ferguson. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our daily interviews with successful real estate investors. And I've put together the top seven key market drivers I look at when analyzing a new real estate market. Go to sethferguson.org to download your free copy. Our guest today has been investing in real estate since 2010 and owns around 80 units, including single family homes, multifamilies, commercial property, and a mobile home park. Shiloh Lundahl joins us today. Shiloh, welcome to Purchase Your Profits. It's great to have you on the show. Well, thank you so much, Seth. I'm glad to be here. I've listened to quite a few of your uh, podcasts and I appreciate you inviting me on your show. Yeah, but pleasure is all mine. I'm really looking forward to this. So uh, let's dive right in and uh, talk about your real estate goals. What are you looking to accomplish right now with real estate? Oh, uh, that's a good, a good question. Um, you know, we have a lot of different types of real estate that we're doing, but really what we're looking to do is to uh, this year trying to increase cash flow. So um, my goal is to get up to about 10,000 a month in monthly cash flow um, from the different things that we're doing. And so that's my immediate goal this year. And I'm in a kind of a, a mastermind group right now. We're talking about our goals, we're really focusing on it. And so that's one thing that's, uh, that I'm focused on this year is trying to increase that cash flow. Yeah. And you know, that, that's always a great goal to have because no, everybody loves more cash flow. Um, so what sort of things are you doing then in order to increase that cash flow? Are, are you looking at acquiring other properties with, you know, a greater return or are you just looking to prune things in your current portfolio? So what I'm looking to do is um, we, we follow a lease option model. And so, um, and we've been doing this for the past two years. And so, um, we just kind of been collecting properties. And, and the reason I say collecting properties is because uh, we have a system in place where we'll buy a property oftentimes using hard money l lenders and they'll um, probably fund up to about 90% of the purchase. And then we, we partner with a private money lender that will come in and pay for the rehab. And so our model is basically we try to get a property for um, – about 140 or $145,000, have that be our all in and have that be about 75% of the ARV. And then we refinance the property, getting a commercial loan. And then usually we're able to suck out the majority of our, our, um, uh, our initial um, investment pay off the private money lender and the hard money lender. And then we now have this cash flowing property. And so that is our model. And we've been able to do that for about, um, uh, about 40 properties right now. Um, and most of those are in Arizona. And so um, what we're looking to do is we're, we're taking a, a large part of that portfolio and we're um, creating a portfolio loan. And so that's going to help get rid of a lot of the seconds that we have on several of those properties and um, help, you know, amortize a lot of those and help increase our cash flow. So that is what we're doing right now. Nice. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, you've been involved in a lot of different types of real estate. Um, you know, how, how, how did you know to focus on the lease option uh, just because you've dabbled in everything? So you have a pretty good, um, you know, idea of what's entailed in each different uh, niche. Um, what made you concentrate right now where you're at? So we started investing in 2010, my wife and I, and we just bought a, a property that was in our neighborhood. Um, it was a large house, but we already knew the family that wanted to live in our neighborhood. So we bought a property then, they lived in the property for about five years, and then we ended up selling it to them. And as soon as we bought that first property, I started listening to Dave Ramsey, who said, hey, you know, don't go into debt and things like that. And so I really kind of backed off and, and really focused on getting my finances in a good place, getting myself out of debt. Um, and then in 2014, um, my building that I have my therapy practice out of, because that's what, what I do um, full time is I'm a child and family therapist in Mesa, Arizona. And so what I did is the building that I have my practice in was coming up for sale. I talked with the selling realtor and I was able to get that under contract and I purchased the building. Now the building has 12 different offices in it and then I rent out each of those offices. And so at that point, that was towards the end of 2014, I call up my buddy and who was a real estate investor and who got pretty burned um, during the whole market crash. And I said, hey man, I wanna do a deal with you. And so um, he said, well, all right. So this again, now this is 2015. He says, well, I got a deal ready for us. 
and you can be a hard money lender on it. And I'd opened up a, a credit line using a home equity line of credit in order to rehab my building and things like that. And so I had a, a large credit line just ready to do something with. And so, and I'll get more in depth on that because that's going to be the, the deal that I talked okay. to him more about is the one that I did with him. But then um, in 2015 and 16, we started flipping. And I flipped three properties in 2015 um, for total profit among the three of about um, like 17 to 19,000. So it wasn't a whole lot of money. And then in 2016, we were flipping more. We flipped about six or seven and I got a profit of about 95 and my, par my partner got a profit for about 95 as well. But then in, two the, excuse me, in 2017, it seemed like the margins were getting smaller and smaller. And we had gone to um, just a, a little weekend training on lease options. And we thought, you know what? This might actually work pretty well. So we just tried it with one property, trying to do a lease option with it. And it did seem to work out pretty well. And so we switched our model over to lease options. And a lot of that is because a lot of the um, margins on flips were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so as we switched over to the lease option model, usually a lease option will make us about three times the amount that a flip will make us. And um, there's a lot more benefits to it because you get more, um, not only do you get cash flow, but you also get um, better tax incentives by doing it that way. And um, uh, you look better to a bank by having more properties and, and by having higher cash flow and they're willing to give you more loans. So it just worked out really well to switch over to that model a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, how did you even get started in real estate? Because, you know, you're running a successful practice on, you know, yourself, you know, did you read a book? What was it, you know, watching a TV show, you know, what, what sparked so, the interest? Uh, to be honest, and this kind of sounds weird, but um, well, back in 2010, we did, uh, I was, I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, like a lot of other people do. And so we decided to get a rental back in 2010. And so, but it was just one rental and it was just something that we were dabbling in. We didn't do anything else again until 2014. But in 2014, I thought, you know, I really want to become a better therapist. And in order to become a better therapist, I need to go to um, quality trainings that are taught by good therapists and really get some of that training. And those are expensive to go to. And not only that, but when you have your own practice and you take a week off, then that's all that revenue that you would have made that week is gone as well. And so a lot of these, um, these trainings would cost me maybe $6,000 or so. And um, I didn't have a lot of disposable income at that time. So I thought I need to learn other ways to make money so that I can become a better therapist. So that was what really got me going on starting this journey of real estate investing. Yeah. That's really cool. That, th nobody's ever had an answer like that before. That, that, that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is your biggest challenge right now in your business as it relates to doing the lease option model? So a lot of times the challenges are working with banks. And so that's really my role in this whole, uh, in this whole real estate uh, deal that I do with my, my buddy is I'm the money guy. And so what I do is I work with banks and, um, you know, it's so funny because a bank will lead you along for a while until all of a sudden they break up with you over text message. And I'm not kidding. I really did have that happen <laughs> where I'm, I'm working with a, a banker and he just sends me this text message. Ah, I don't think it's going to work out. And then I call him no answer. And it felt really like somebody <laughs> broke up with me. I'm like, dude, dude, you have no class. Anyway, you, you were, you were ghosted by the banker. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was by a banker uh, anyway so um, but that's that's often the challenges um, as you're growing and as you're growing quickly um, you you have to convince banks uh, by showing them hey this is our model this is what it looks like this is how it's been successful we don't put renters in there for just a short period of time my renters are in there between three to five years and um, and I don't have any vacancies I've had like one vacancy uh, maybe yeah, one or two over the last uh, two years on all of the properties that I have. And they were a short vacancy of a month or two. 
But the people that come in with these option fees of like $3,900, sometimes more if it's a higher price property. And so they're really um, putting some skin in the game where they really want these properties. And so it brings down vacancy, it brings down maintenance costs, it brings down um, CapEx and turnover. And so um, we're able to, to get cash flow even though our, our loans are only 20 year loans right now. But again, the biggest, the biggest challenge is funding a lot of times. You, you have to work with banks. And then we also work with a lot of private money lenders um, that'll come in and they wanna learn our model. And so they'll come in, they'll pay for rehab and then we'll teach them the model and we put them in on our WhatsApp group. And so they can kind of see what we're doing. Uh, they can ask us questions and all of those things. And so really the biggest challenge a lot of times for us is just um, coordinating money. Yeah. And uh, do you have any tips? Because lots of the viewers and listeners are beginners or intermediates when it comes to investing. Um, let, let's say somebody's never done this and they're brand new to, let's say, the hard money side. What sort of advice would you give them uh, starting out? So I suggest partnering with people that have experience. To be honest, I mean, my wife is somebody that could read a book and then she could go and she could do something. So my wife has, has built my websites that I have. And if you look at my websites, they look really, really good. And she was able to learn how to do that by going online, by listening to, to tutorials, by reading books. And she's just somebody that, that's like that, that can read something and then go and create something. She's amazing. However, I'm not like that. What helps me is by partnering with somebody who knows what they're doing and knows what they're talking about. And then I can listen and listen and listen. And then I start being part of the process until I feel um, comfortable and confident to go out and do it on my own. So for me, I would suggest people that are like my wife, go read a book and then go do it. For people that are like me, partner with somebody that knows what they're doing so that you can learn that process and then feel comfortable and then go in and start doing it but also having that connection. So as you go and you start doing it and you get nervous and you're not sure what you're doing, then you reach back out to, out to them and say, hey, can you help me with this? That's what I would suggest. Gotcha. No, that's a, that's a really great tip. Um, so what sort of routines or rituals have you developed uh, that have helped make you a successful real estate investor? <sighs> Working hard. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest thing is, so, um, you know, I, I did read the, the book Miracle Morning and I really, really liked that book. And um, when I'm doing well, I follow that. And so that, that book includes a lot of things such as meditation, prayer, affirmations, um, you know, uh, reading and writing and, um, and visualization. And so I try to do those things. But when I'm stressed, I have a harder time doing those things because I wake up in the morning and then I just start going and going and going. Because my lifestyle is a little bit different than a lot of people's lifestyle. Um, I live half the time in Arizona and the other half the time I'm in Burbank, California. And so the reason being is because, and this is actually um, coming on a later, later on in the, um, in the podcast, you're gonna ask me about some of the, the benefits of real estate investing, and this was one of them. My daughter, when she was six years old, she said um, to my wife, when my wife asked all of my kids what they wanted to do, um, you know, thinking it'd be you know, an instrument or a sport, um, my daughter said she wanted to be an actress. And so, and she's six years old. And rather than just saying, well, sweetie, that's unrealistic. We can't afford that. Um, we'd started doing real estate at that point and we had some extra money coming in. And so we said, well, we'll look into it. And then she did a little camp in Arizona. And then they told her if she went to California, did another camp, they, she'd probably get an agent. And so she did. And so she got an agent and a manager and she's done some things where she's been on TV and some commercials. But the, the agent said if we were to move up into um, California, it would give her more of an opportunity. And so we moved my family up there in uh, 2006. And so I just go back and forth from Burbank, California to um, Mesa, Arizona. And so um, I'm trying to get to your question. Ask me your question one more time. I think I lost it. No, yeah, it was just routines and rituals. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so again, I have, uh, when I wake up in the morning, I just start working um, from, you know, answering emails and things like that. And I work from like six in the morning, sometimes even earlier until like 10 or 11 at night when I'm in Arizona. And then when I'm in California, I try to be with my family as much as I can. I try to be really present with them. And so I think working hard is really the key. But um, also I, I'm in contact with um, my partner and with my assistant all the time. That's really helpful. And then when I'm doing really well, I follow the miracle morning in the morning. So that's what I try to do. 
Yeah. No, I, I like the very honest answer. You sometimes do it. That's, that's good. <laughs> and, uh, and why do you think, cause there's so many people out there um, that, you know, always want to get into real estate, but they don't, they always come up with a reason not to pull the trigger. What may, like, what is it about you that actually had to take action and pull the trigger on that first deal? You know, it's interesting. It's a really good question. Um, I think it has a lot to do with risk tolerance level. So um, growing up, I uh, would have been diagnosed with ADHD. Okay. So one thing with people diagnosed with ADHD, and I can say this as a professional because I work with people who are diagnosed with ADHD all the time, um, their, uh, their risk tolerance level is a lot higher than a lot of other people. People will see a situation, they'll think, hey, I could do that. And then that that um, impulse control thing comes up and says, ah, it's probably not a good idea. But with people with ADHD, that tends to be a little bit less strong, and so they're more willing to take risks. So when I uh, see an opportunity that I think, hey, this looks like a good opportunity, it's, um, I, I go for it a lot of times. And I do have a partner, though, and he is really good at being my, my go, no go, you know, part of my brain that says, ah, no, that's not a good deal. We need, to, we need to look at numbers, and if the numbers don't work, it doesn't matter if you like the deal. We do the deals according to the numbers. And so that's been really, really helpful. So what he kind of um, says sometimes to people is that I'm the engine and he's the brakes. Mm -hmm. And so I get us moving fast and, and going and going and going, and he helps us not get into bad deals. Yeah, the, uh, the, the sober second thought behind the scenes. Yeah, and, and, and you know, like, like you just described, that's kind of what you need in a partnership. You, you can't have two people with the same personalities because I'll just, you know, you'll, you'll end up uh, crashing. But having those two right. opposites, you, you have like the go-getter, then you have the guy kind of pulling back a bit. I, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and, and our team isn't that big. It's basically myself, my buddy, the realtor. Um, and then it's, uh, and if you ever want to get somebody on your show, that's fantastic. Name's Jason Moss. He's awesome. He uh, he's like the human Swiss Army knife. <laughs> okay, so he can do anything. Um, anyway, so going back to um, our team, so it's myself, uh, my buddy Jason, and he has an assistant, and then I have an assistant, and so that's that's our main team. And then my assistant manages a lot of the rehabs. She does a lot of the um, uh, leasing out of the properties, and she's just awesome in every area. Yeah. No, that's great. Well, let's jump into that deal that we alluded to at the start. So the Keystone deal. Um, so can you give us uh, some more details on that? Yeah. So this was, this is a, a different kind of a deal. So what happened was um, I called up my buddy and I said, Hey, I want to do a deal with you. And so he said, all right, well, I got this deal and um, he found it by um, just basically doing some marketing and, and he went to a house and he said, was just looking to see if they wanted to sell the house. They said no. And he said, well, is there anybody else in the neighborhood you think that would like to sell their house? And they pointed to a house on the corner. So he goes and he approaches them and they were going to be foreclosed on by both taxes and the HOA and they only had 30 days to get out of the property. Now, um, what was interesting about it is they owned the home free and clear. And, um, but what had happened, I think that they had inherited it or something, but they had to leave. And so what they wanted is they uh, told my buddy, look, we just need a house to live in that we can buy and, um, uh, and a little bit of money on the side. So the house, um, so we got it under contract for um, like $123,000. And the way that it was done was he structured it to where we would be paying, um, paying off the liens, okay, be putting $80,000 in, and they would carry back a $40,000 note. So after we sold the property, we would then pay off that $40,000 note. So um, we got into the property, and it turns out it was a drug home. And um, so we're in there, and it was horrible. They would cut off the water a couple of months back, and yet they were still using the toilets. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in other words, um, it, things were just brimming everywhere. And the, uh, the plumber came and he said that that was the, he came in like a hazmat suit and he had a hard time not throwing up. And he said that was the worst experience with plumbing he had ever had in his life. So um, we did that. We rehabbed that property. It was only about 20,000 to rehab. Um, but then uh, we put it on the market. And, you know, right when we put it on the market, the people called and said, Hey, have you sold the house yet? We really want that 40,000. 
my buddy said, you know, we, we just got it on the market. It might sell in a month. It might sell in three or four months. And they were pretty anxious to get it. And so he said, well, hey, look, I can look and talk with the investor and see if he's willing to pay you out early. And so he and I talked about it. And then he went back to the, um, to the people that held the note and um, said, well, look, the investor is willing to um, pay you off uh, $30,000 for that $40,000 note. And they're like, no, 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 we'll just wait. And then they called uh, about a week later and said, yeah, we'll take the 30,000. So we paid off the $40,000 note with $30,000. And then with just in about a month or two, we were able to sell the property for about 195. So my buddy um, earned about $45,000, didn't use any of his money. I used about $110,000 on my credit line, but then I earned about $13,000 um, on that one deal, just being the hard money lender. But I got to participate in the process and I got to learn a lot from it. So that was um, that keystone deal because it made me realize, wow, through this whole process, I was able to earn $13,000. And so it really gave me confidence to go and try it again. And my next one, I went and I did on my own and I lost $5,000 on it. And I learned a lot from that. And then I did another one that year and I gained about nine from that. So um, that was my first year in doing it, but it really kind of helped me gain some confidence and learn somewhat of the system of how to start doing it. Yeah. Oh, that's a great story, especially the, the plumber almost throwing up because those guys have seen some pretty serious stuff. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I, I'm, actually, I have to say I've never seen a plumber in a hazmat suit, so you've seen way more than I have. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was yeah. bad. All right, well, let, let's jump into um, you know, how real estate has uh, changed and impacted your life so far. Um, I, I know you talked a little bit about your daughter and being able to to move uh, for her acting. Um, what yeah. other changes or impact has it made? Well, I mean, that's a major one. I mean, moving my family out to California, and they've been there for about three years. And our goal is to stay out there for one more year. Um, but uh, it's it's been wonderful. It really has. I've met uh, some amazing people through the whole process. They've... Um, uh, just a lot of friends that I've made, I've, I've learned to think differently. So I started a, a what would you call it, a pretty intense like personal and professional development training um, program since I've been involved um, in, in, um, in real estate. And so I listen to audios daily on leadership um, from a company called Life Leadership. I listen to a lot of those audios every day. Um, I read a lot of books on real estate, a lot of books on um, personal development. And so as I'm traveling back and forth from Arizona to California, it gives me six hours one way to just dive in and, and learn and listen. And um, so that's, that's really kind of completely changed me over the last three years. Um, and then uh, being in California has actually been a great experience for my wife and for my kids. Um, not that Arizona wasn't good. Arizona was great, but it's just been such a great experience to meet people there and, and, um, and build some great friendships. So I think overall, obviously financially, it's been helpful for us. Our, our income over the last, or not our income, but our net worth over the last, um, two years has tripled, um, by doing the lease option model, um, which has been, you know, great. My income has doubled. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, all of that has, you know, obviously changed my life, but I think even more than that, the relationships that I've made has, has made my life um, much more rich and fulfilled. Yeah. And uh, looking ahead, let's say 10 years from now, do you, do you see yourself um, concentrating more on the real estate? Like, do you have plans maybe whenever the time's right to go full time? You know, I love being a therapist and I've done a lot of specialized training in being a therapist. And so I work, my specialty is working with um, children and families. And so I help parents become therapeutic to their own kids. And, and that's what parents really, really want. And so I have some very specific specialized training in that. And I've been able to help a lot of people. And so I don't see myself not doing that because I think that that's a uh, a gift or a talent that, that, uh, I've been blessed with. And so, um, 
I think that I'll continue to do that for the rest of my life. Um, it may not be as much as I do now. Um, one of the things that I really want to do is I, um, I lived in Costa Rica for a couple of years and I loved it. I got to do a lot of service out there and, and meet people. And, and one of the things that my kid wants is he wants to have a farm. My daughter wants to have some rental properties in Costa Rica. So we're going to build a kind of a, a, a farm with a main house and like four or five little casitas, little guest houses around it. And then we're going to do some Airbnb stuff down there. We're going to have, uh, again, the farm with a lot of animals. I'm going to be able to go down there, have a house and have several um, friends come in and stay with me there. And so that's kind of the vision that I would like in the next maybe seven to 10 years. Oh, I, that's, that's awesome. Well, yeah, you'll have to let me know when construction starts and start sending me pictures. I will. Uh, that, that's, that's great. Well, uh, Shiloh, if somebody's looking to get in touch with you, um, maybe learn more about uh, your lease option strategy and what you're doing, uh, where can they find you? So they can reach me at um, blueequities.com. And so that's my website. Uh, that's one of my real estate websites. Um, they can see that um, information on me there. I need to update that more, but, um, but they can reach out to me there. Also, I post a lot on uh, bigger pockets. Um, have a lot of, um, uh, yeah, I, I posted a lot there. I, I have basically I've connected with a lot of people on bigger pockets. I've probably been able to raise, um, like $800,000 from the people that I've met on bigger pockets. And so, um, they've funded a lot of my deals. They're on my WhatsApp investor group and we get together for lunches and things like that. And it's just been, it's been great, but that's basically the, the two ways of getting old me. You can give me a call, but my voicemail is usually full. So sending a text is probably better than leaving a message. But, um, but yeah, those are ways of, of getting in touch with me. No, that, that's perfect. Well, I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time today. I uh, really enjoyed our talk. Me too. Thanks so much, Seth, for having me on. Yeah, no, you're, you're very welcome. And uh, to you, our viewers, I wish you well on your, per uh, on your journey from purchase to profit. See you next time.